Hello and welcome to my review on granulating watercolors. In this video I will make 32 swatches of the watercolors by the brands Daniel Smith, Schmincke and Van Gogh that I have in my palette. Get comfortable, make yourself a cup of tea or coffee, I always drink tea when I'm painting, and let's get started. Greenlighting watercolors create very nice interesting textures in watercolor and they can break into a few colors when added water. Sometimes they can be based on the genuine stones like most of the Daniel Smith granulating watercolors and sometimes it's just some pigments that we are normally using in watercolor like ultramarine or burnt sienna, burnt umber. Some of the colors I have in these small boxes that I prepared for plein airs, for painting outside, and also sometimes I just need to add some granulating color, and here it is, my small box that I can use for this purpose. Let's start with Daniel Smith watercolors, and I will show you 14 swatches. I'll start with under sea green color that I use a lot when I'm painting botanicals and flowers and I think that it's really nice green color. Next one is Jodi Genuine and it's also green but cold green hue that I also use in painting botanicals. And uh, what you should know about Daniel Smith granulating watercolors, if it's Primatec series, it means that these colors are based on genuine stones, like um, jadeite or amethyst or um, sodalite, for example. Here are two more green shades from Primatech series. It's Serpentine Genuine and Green Appetite Genuine. And basically if the color has this genuine part in the name, it means that it's based on the genuine stone. Now I will move to the blue shades and I will start with Mayan Blue Genuine. I 
I can say that I use this color a lot and uh, regarding the granulating colors sometimes it's just hard to find what to paint with them and normally I use some of the colors for the background like for example next color Sodely Genuine I really love creating backgrounds with this color especially around white objects and it looks very nice Here is more like um, color of the brick, I would say, or earthy color, Piemonti Genuine. Another one is not from Primatech series, but I use it quite a lot and it's one of my favorite and in the end of these swatches I will tell you what are my favorite colors out of this um, Daniel Smith palette and Shadow Violet is one of them. I don't know if you noticed, but after I swatch the color, I add some droplets of water to the wet surface because the water helps to reveal the granulating texture of this color. So if you don't see the granulating texture, it means that you don't use the textured watercolor paper because normally we need to use cold pressed or rough paper and you don't use enough water if you don't see these nice effects rose of ultramarine is very nice color and when the color breaks into the pigments you can clearly see the mix of rose and ultramarine Moon Glow is the first color that I bought from Granulating series and this is how I started to collect Granulating watercolors. This is very nice color for backgrounds, but I don't use it very often. I also like how some of the artists are using Moon Glow for creating shadows of the objects. It looks very nice. Lunar Blue is very similar to Sedalit, I guess. It's not that blue, it's more like a mix of Sedalit and Mayan Blue Genuine. And the difference is that it's not a Primatech color, so it's not based on some genuine stone. The next one is Hematite Genuine, it's also from Primatech collection 
and um, I would say it's very neutral color it's almost like oxid black but maybe not so pigmented the next one is imperial purple and I will show you how this color looks on the palette just look at this amazing mix it looks like space or something totally magical and this one is also one of my favorite colors from green latin series along with shadow violet suddenly genuine and basically all the hues of green because i use them in my botanical illustrations We are done with the most expensive line of granulating watercolors that I have in my collection. And now we are moving to Schminke watercolors. Some of them and most of them I have in pens and only a few colors I have in the tubes. And we will start with the forest gray color. The next one is Tundra Pink. I don't know that much about granulating watercolors by Schminke, if they are made of gemstones or not, but I know that they have different series like Tundra, Desert and some others. Tundra Violet is my favorite color from the whole series of uh, Schminke granulating watercolors that I have. It's not all apparently, but um, it looks very nice and it can be used for painting shadows like Moon Glow by Daniel Smith or for backgrounds. Tundra Orange, I guess this color we can use in painting foreground for landscapes or cityscapes and maybe also for some botanical painting. The next color is very popular and it's called Potter's Pink. And I think that it's popular because you can mix it with other 
colors and create nice shades. And um, I've tried mixing Potter's Pink and I like a lot of shades that it gets with other colors. I think it's important for which purpose you are using green lighting watercolors and um, your choice will depend on this purpose because mostly I use green lighting watercolors for painting botanicals and backgrounds. So it means that I am more interested in different blue shades and green shades. And the last color is Shire Yellow and that's it from my Schminke watercolors. And uh, my favorites are Tundra Violet, Tundra Green and Forest Grey are also nice and Potter's Pink I can also use in my mixes. Now let's move to the swatches of Van Gogh granulating watercolors. I have only four colors and let's see them. The Van Gogh watercolors will be the cheapest option out of three brands that I mentioned in this video. I will start with the Dusk Violet color, which is actually my favorite from the Van Gogh granulating series. These watercolors will be cheaper because they don't have some genuine pigments or minerals inside but still they are quite nice for creating these textures in watercolor. The next one is Dusk Pink. Then I have Dusk Yellow, which I sometimes use for painting botanicals and leaves. This color also reminds me of a mix of yellow and paints gray or yellow and black. And the last but not least, Oxide Black. And here is the secret about this color. 
you can actually mix other non-granulating colors with oxid black and get granulating colors instead. Like for example, one of my favorite mixes is oxid black and yellow. And basically it's dusk yellow that I showed you before. And oxid black and uh, some blue color like for example ultramarine. It gives a very nice stormy grayish blue shade. You can easily create your own granulating palette with uh, Oxid Black, mixing it with other colors, like for example I did here with Ultramarine and Pico Green. That's all of my granulating watercolors. I'm curious which ones you like the most or which colors do you have in your palette and how do you use granulating watercolors in your paintings? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and let me know what would you like to know about watercolor. I hope to see you in my next video.